Uh, today we're going to take a look at the uh, uh, disassembly and assembly of our 2AM motor and uh, we have a kit that's available to order. It's a tool kit uh, that we can use to disassemble uh, the bearings and the seals and uh, to reassemble uh, with the new uh, parts and we're going to go over that today. Uh, for starters we have uh, the number one here. This is a disassembly uh, bearing pusher. Our number, our number two. Uh, this is uh, a reassembly pusher uh, to put in a new bearing. Our number three. Uh, this one here will uh, reassemble uh, a bearing as well. They're open on the end here so that they can go over the shaft of the motor and yet seat the bearing. Uh, number four, this is a bearing remover, another bearing disassembly pusher. They have just enough of a shoulder on here that it will go through the inside uh, of the inner circle of the bearing and yet catch the outer edge just enough to be able to push it out. And number five, this is a uh, another tool here that we use to reseat uh, the seal that goes around the bearing to protect the bearing. This is a number five tool. And our number six tool, uh, this here is designed uh, to tighten down on the top of the motor. It's threaded on the end here. And then it has a, uh, a threaded rod that goes down through the center. And it acts as a gear puller basically. And what that will do is when this is tightened down, when this is seated inside, it will uh, take apart the top half of the motor for you. And these are the tools that we use. And again, they are available to order. Uh, you can check it out on our website, powerwise.com. Uh, now that we've um, got the motor uh, attached and locked in the vise here, uh, what I do to make it a little simplified here is just take a black magic marker and you can just make a line on the top half of the motor and another line on the bottom part of the motor so that when we reassemble it, all you have to do is line up the, the two marks there for reassembly. Uh, we're going to start out here by using a crescent wrench to remove the uh, end cap. It'll come off like so. It has a gasket on there too that we'll be replacing. And then we're going to use our disassembly uh, tool that works as a uh, gear puller, but prior to that we have to take these six screws out. I'm going to use an air air gun to remove those screws uh, but if those of you that don't care about using the air gun you can just use your ratchet with the same uh, number three Phillips head Air tool makes it a little quicker uh, to take it apart. I'd probably recommend using the ratchet uh, during reassembly though because you can uh, monitor uh, the amount of torque that you put on it. Again, uh, this is threaded here on this particular tool. Uh, this is the uh, dead end plate puller. They, this is referred to as the dead end plate and this side is the drive end plate. Uh, it's threaded inside here and we're going to tighten down like so. Run that into the top of the dead end plate. And take that in by hand. And then we can also use our crescent wrench again to just snug that up a little bit. Now, this threaded rod has a welded nut on the end here. Uh, you can either again 
do that by hand or we can use the air tool. I'm going to use the air tool and we're going to drive that in. What that's going to do is it's going to push down inside uh, the top of the rotor and it'll pull this uh, dead end plate away uh, just like a gear puller. And at this point uh, now we've uh, removed the top half of the motor and we're ready to do some inspecting. Okay, now that we've got the top half of the motor uh, disassembled, uh, we're going to take this out of the vise and we're going to examine our veins in here. But in order to do so, what we want to do is just get the vise at just the right distance where we can turn this upside down, set it in the vise like so, and we have to make sure that the rotor assembly is clear to be able to drop drop down below here before we do this next step. Make sure you put a rag or some type of soft material underneath to protect that rotor assembly when it comes out. But in this case, it's already damaged as we have noticed that there was a big chip of uh, metal taken out on the other side from uh, trying to service it themselves. Uh, oftentimes, too, without using the, the gear puller that we have there, uh, they'll try to pry this open and this ends up getting gouged up and uh, that, that allows air leaks and then the compression is going to be down on the motor. So that's why we really recommend using uh, the set of tools uh, for this. Now I'm going to bang this out. I've just got a rubber mallet. It's almost out. Get down here to try to catch it. Okay. Now we have the top side of the motor is empty. We have the rotor disassembled. And now this is the point where we can take the vanes out and begin to inspect the internal parts of the motor. And in a lot of cases these vanes uh, if the motor is under lubricated, uh, the veins are going to get dried out, they'll chip, they'll crack, and when those get in there, uh, 90 times, 90% 90 of the time the motor is going to end up seizing up then. And that's why it's important to keep your motors lubricated.